Nashville uh, at Zanies Comedy Club, which the Nashville Zanies is one of the best structured comedy clubs for comedy. Brian and Andrew Dorfman, legendary comedy club owners, together under one roof at the Nashville Zanies on St. Patrick's Day. This is an actual date we're having yeah. right now? Well, no, I just, it bothers me that we're dating? Uh, when you listen to podcasts, because I listen to shit that might be big, four years old. Big Star and they'll, Trek fan. They'll, they'll, they'll say, oh, I'll, I'll be at the fucking you know, Sir, La- Sir Laughs a Lot. Great club, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. No, that was uh, Sir Laughs a Lot was Springfield, Missouri. Uh, there was also. But they'll plug their dates without <laughs> giving the year. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not a guy that I like. I listen to this shit on the road because young people who know how to work iPods know how to put it on, and I, I don't know. But I have it's... a date every year at Sir Laughs a Lot because that's there's another one. At. There's a Sir there was Laughs one in Milwaukee. a Lot. Yes. All right, this is uh, the uh, Blotto Biography Podcast. Since uh, after 23 years of comedy, I don't remember a fucking thing I've done with my life other than constantly been been in a circle of the road. And this is a a special one that we didn't uh, uh, think would happen. I have both the Dorfman brothers, (laughs) legendary comedy club owners, in the same room, in the green room at Zany's in Nashville. Andrew Dorfman used to run Uncle Funnies in the day down in Davie, Florida. Yep. Brian Dorfman has run Zanies here in Nashville forever, and good goodness. <laughs> good. good goodness. Actually, Big Dorf just moved to Nashville. Do you know that he lives here from? Yeah, from he told me. You live here now. But Big Dorfman was the scariest club owner next to Sh- Steve Sharippa that you ever worked for. Yeah, just so you know. Okay. I was standing off with Don Herrera because he used to say that about Sharippa, too. And I love Sharippa. I know that he and I can go in a ring, and I'll be the one walking out. Oh, I believe that. There's no yeah. way. Shri- so he's not. The, I, I got him hands down. Sharippa buddy. falls I'll into the any day of the week. Sharippa falls Hoss. into the category. I'm Bert will kick your, I got Bert. <laughs> Sharippa falls into the category where I, I always used to say, "When did we become the people we used to pretend to be?" <laughs> and Sharippa was always the guy that pretended to be the guy on The Sopranos, and it worked out for him. Worked but out yeah, there. I'd have my money on you too. Any day of the week. He's a great guy. <laughs> Yeah, not, not mocking, but I'm telling you, he's not coming out of that. You round. never hit me. He did. <laughs> <laughs> not, not hard. He's a, it was the legendary quote. Steve Sharippa, he was he was on The Sopranos later, but he used to run the Riviera, and he'd right. say to me as an opener, he was the first guy that booked me in a real club, and he, he'd go, uh, uh, "You're doing seven minutes, not <laughs> oh fuck, I'm gonna screw it up. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, not, not seven oh one, not six ninety nine. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> That's Steve. He ran a tight room. He did. He's a tough guy. Tough guy. <laughs> So now you're my age, and you're the younger brother. Yes. But you're the one that's punchy and doesn't remember shit like I don't. Yeah, well, you know, a lot, the 80s were not as good to me as they were to Brian. <laughs> that's for, that's yeah. for sure. I still had hope in the 80s. Yeah. You, 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 you and I, <laughs> when you came to Uncle Funny's, we used to party down and have a, have a good time. I remember you used to, you, you booked me once with uh, uh, Otto and George. Yes. Because at that time, Otto and George was legendary for maybe not showing up at all. Correct. Uh, uh, yeah. So you had to co-headline him. <laughs> and Otto, out of all the comics, has the best segue into a joke I ever heard in my whole entire life. He had a guy heckling him, and he looked at him and goes, I'm going to fuck you in the ass so hard, your shoes are going to be full of blood. <laughs> Everybody have a good Halloween here? <laughs> <laughs> Like, what, what, what? Good Halloween? What was that? <laughs> you had me do something with him, and I think it was after a three show Saturday where they were doing some, uh, the, the radio was hosting something at a bar that after three shows, you still wanted us to go to a bar. You, and you had like, to do the puppets. I'm going to follow you. I'll be over there. And like, no, you come with us. We'll drive you. No, I'll follow you. He didn't show up. Got to be honest, I have no clue what you're talking about. I think it was like a titty bar or something that. We were supposed to go to for political reasons. Uncle Funny's turned into a titty bar. It, yeah, it, it, well, it wasn't a titty bar. It was a Sofa King sports bar. That's what we turned it into. We, we, you know, Sofa King, yeah, you yeah, like your yeah, girl, yeah, Sofa it. King Hot, yeah, the yeah. Bear Sofa King Colton. It was actually the first R-rated sports bar in the United States, and we got sued by the motion picture industry that we had to take R-rated out of the name. 
Because they, it, 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 seriously, they do. They the NPAA own, owns R rated. They own R rated. I mean, we oh, had a so lot. I mean, the, the, the suit he that wasn't they wasn't smart said, enough to spell it O U R. Actually, the lawsuit we got, we, the, the, the booklet, it was literally like, um, like 700 pages long. The lawsuit that they sent to us. But it was the first R-rated sports bar ever, and it'll probably be the last because of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah I, I used to get booked as triple X-rated. No, you were I did clubs. that. Here, no, 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 yeah, you but were they, triple R-rated because but, uh, you, there was no nudity. No, the, no. no well, I don't know about here, but comedy clubs in oh, general. Oh, but okay. they'll never sue you for that. <laughs> no. Yeah, tri- no. triple X, they distance themselves. They what? Oh, really? No, a- a- actually, well, right. we have a well, fact checker in the back, yeah. Radley Bolko. Actually, X-rated you can use. Anybody can use X-rated. You can't use R-rated, G, PG, yeah, you but X-rated you, you can't use. And triple X is also open. Anybody can. Right, use Exa- that is actually correct. Yeah, but R-rated we couldn't use. Speaking of, I am sponsored by Saks Underpants with two X's. <laughs> I'm doing sponsorship for. Th- Products I like, and hopefully they come around <laughs> and say, "Yeah, that way I can." I, I just promote Saks underpants? underpants. You're a fucking old dude. Yeah, I'm, I fucking, I'd show them to you. Yeah, they're no. They're, what is Saks underpants? They're right? underpants where they have like a ball cup inside that hold. If you have long balls, they keep Spanx. Spanx for men. But it's an actual like. <laughs> Like yeah. wings that hold gonna your be ball. 50 <laughs> wings fucking gonna good. be fifty pretty soon. We have all have psychic yeah, balls. Yeah, they yeah. Just, they, yeah, they drop. All right. So which one of you booked me first? I think it was. I will you. tell you the story. It's one hundred percent me. All right. Because I say with, it's me. Yeah, will the I'm, real person? I, you know, no, and I, the, I will the, tell the story. Wait, and, these are the Dorfmans. Wait, sorry, I will refer to Brian. you as Nashville yeah. and yeah. Florida. Actually, it's true, Davey. But, 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 fired you and then no, 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 no. You no, got to book right, him. Let, let him go. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying because that's Nashville. Go. I didn't book you. Oh. Here, All right. Lenny Sisselman booked you. Here, who was the manager before me? Saw you at a comedy festival in Florida. Okay, and I, this already sounds no, Friars Club. No, Lenny right. Sisselman was that guy. <laughs> exactly. Remember? Okay, no, we, exactly. we used to nosh. Nineteen, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> okay, no, so, um, and I had never seen him. Because, oh, you got to see this guy. He's hilarious. Okay, so it's that's where I think it was still like a Tuesday through Sunday week, whatever it was. But you got here like Wednesday night, and the show is your show. <laughs> It's not easy to sit there and watch an audience and go n- and not having a clue what the show was. I think I'm going to see, you know, Doug Stan. I'll tell knock knock jokes or whatever the fuck's going to be <laughs> is a joke. So I'm I am laughing. You're my style of comedy. 17 years ago or 16 and a half or whatever the hell it was probably was not the style of comedy for Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, no. Right. So. And the crowd was a little uncomfortable, I guess is a, is a pretty good word to say. So I'm, I'm like scrambling. I'm like laughing. I'm crying. I, I got a lot of emotions going through me at, at this moment. So that's when I put like triple X rated everywhere, make the announcement for the shows, all that kind of stuff. So go through all week. We get through we, whatever walkouts we had, no fights, nothing bad, nothing yeah. bad. Sunday night, I pay you. I said, Doug, <laughs> I cannot remember the last time I've laughed this hard. I go, personally, I love you. I go, do not be offended. If I never book you again, I go, here's my brother's phone number. He will give you as many weeks a year as you to, want. Go down to where the Coke is. They like it. They exactly. like this kind of humor down in South Florida. That's 100% true. That's 100% true. And, and you, you actually called me up because I told – I mean, I never booked I – I shouldn't say I never booked, but I didn't book you for a bunch of years. And I told everybody, if you have a chance to see this guy – Go see him. I didn't book you. Not here in Nashville. Is this a story about you? I was the first guy that you had to apologize for firing? Well, no. That okay, was, that was not. That was, that, that was, right, that's a completely good. separate story. All right, good. You, I mean. No, go, go, go ahead. Keep well, going. Well, that one was. <laughs> well, for, let, let, let me just back up. I know how you, you feel, both of you. <laughs> Because we do a, a huge Super Bowl party every year. And we have. I live in a very condensed, silent residential neighborhood which is the last two streets before a long way to mexico <laughs> and we play we've had bands play there we've had no noise complaints and neighbors but it's so quiet that if you just had a conversation this loud you can hear it two blocks away if you're on your porch 
and they've never complained about bands. Then one Super Bowl, we thought, hey, let's put up some comics because they want to go up. And we put up Christine Levine, who's fucking hilarious. And she was a, she got about four minutes in. And I'm already like, okay, they're on a microphone, which is unnecessary <laughs> in this neighborhood. <laughs> And she's talking about having four kids and how it made her destroyed her pussy. Her pussy looks like it swallowed a dog and it chewed its way out. And I'm a dwarfman at the back of my yard. We're outside pacing back and forth going, oh, the comment card is not going to be good on this. I'm dying. <laughs> and yeah, by eight minutes, the cops were there. We're sorry, folks. We're not going to force you to drink mineral tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let that you was, go on yeah. that. It was an uncomfortable. There's some free wait, wait, passes wait, wait. for Mustang Sally. will be here yeah. for the Fourth of July. No, party. then you came down to Uncle Funny's and we booked you twice a year for for, for five years. I don't think Six we years. had problems. No, ever. no, they loved you down by me. Yeah, radio, we did great. You, you, you were you came down, you hung out, you and Batsy. That's where you met Bats. I used to do a, a like my impression of him. It wasn't a good impression, but Uh-oh. I remember him picking me up from the airport. And talking uh, uh, shit about like comics, and yeah, these comics call me up. <laughs> the, the way I I said the impression, not the right accurate okay. words, but uh, yeah. And then Richard Jenny calls me up and he's like, "I can't stay in the condo if it's got a microwave because I got a pacemaker." And I'm like, "Fuck him! He can pay for his own hotel." <laughs> My impressions of club owners who brag about how badly they treat comics to the comics. <laughs> It was based in something. I still remember the punchline. I don't know what you actually said. Uh, that's funny. Uh, I, I don't think I said that. No, you didn't say anything like that. I just... I wrote that before the passing of Richard Jenny. Uh, wow. Give me an Uncle Funny story. I, I don't... We, you know what? We didn't have any problems there. You're, you actually, there's probably one club actually, where you were in the you were allowed to come back to. <laughs> <laughs> you were welcome there all the time. I remember the the guy doing the bit about the AA guy who said, uh, and it was actually written there based on this was uh, Joe Vernon, my friend, who is a clean and sober guy that would always you know talk about AA, but tell me you're funnier when you're drunk was based on a three show Saturday, which is fucking nightmarish to a comic. I don't Especially one with a drinking problem. Yes. <laughs> and a 7 o'clock show to elderly, blue-haired, old Floridians. And so I, I stayed vaguely sober through the first show, had a great second show, third show I'm fucked up, and I did some blow, which is easy to find around there, and fucking killed. <laughs> and that's when he's like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're kind of right. You are funnier when you're fucked up. <laughs> Because he stayed there for all three shows. When we get comics who call us and say, hey, I just went through AA and I'm cleaned up and I need some help getting some work, the first thing we say, are you still funny? Because when (laughs) they get all cleaned up, they're not funny anymore. Yeah, you probably can't drop any. Wait, wait, I was going to say names of people that... How about dead guys that were? <laughs> well, let's go with the dead. We can talk let's about find the, dead. the dead guys. Who, no, who, I'm saying you don't want to name names of people that got sober and got weren't sober funny, and anymore. funny anymore. This is, this. That's not what this podcast is about. <laughs> but we'll talk about it afterwards. We are in a green room. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, the, like Dak Raycow, when he cleaned up, was not as funny. Remember right. Dak? No, I know. I, I know. He, he went his Kodak for a while. Was, I, I know and the got, name. My brother said he, got, he saw he him at your sued. club. My brother's uh, sister-in-law, their fucking in-law, they, he saw Dak Rakow at your club. That's how I know the name. And, and he's one. He used to go by the name Kodak and actually got sued by Kodak and had to get rid of the name. Fuck. He couldn't use the name Kodak anymore, yeah. Well, it we're not Kodak, sponsored by Kodak, Kodak, Kodak on this. Kozak, there's another Kozak, one. Kozak, yeah. Uh, actually, and the then last when he went week, by the, the R-rated last Kodak, week, he got you, by you, you guys know who Kozak is, right? He was yeah. the magician and stuff. The last, last week before he got straightened up, he was uh, he used to juggle and stuff. And we had a kid's show. And he got so drunk, he was juggling balls and bounced one right off the kid's head right in the front row. That's, <laughs> just I mean, bounced a couple of them off. The only we're time like, you want to see someone juggle is when they <laughs> fuck up. And we're like, you I need, don't want to see you do you this You need to well. go to rehab because the kid came down and was crying. <laughs> he just busted it right off this kid's head. <laughs> so. All right. Like, tell me about the time I was fired. Uh, the time, actually, the, I didn't fire you from the club doing the Bob and Tom tours. 
Oh yeah, right, right. right. So then I, I which so, brings it back to you. so so we're, we're <laughs> <laughs> when I no no so so we're doing the tour. So uh, and and, and then we just started doing tours. They were pretty good. And then so Tom goes, um, let's do it. Let's you know he likes the show. I said Doug's probably not going to be. Can you start? You started doing the radio show. Obviously Tom great. is always like a it, huge fan. First few times was recoiling in horror. Thought I'd never be back, and then I was uh, surprised. And then uh, the last several times I've done it, it's like you, like really overly complimentary to the point where you're like, you really fucking like me. <laughs> and so, be, but because be, because of the shows and the success that you had on the show, and he liked it. He goes, let's do some, you know, let's put Doug. I go, we can't just put Doug uh, <laughs> on with, you know, Patty Vasquez or something. You, know, you, know, you, know, you just put you know, four comics together. You know, they're all relatively clean. Pat Godwin doing funny songs. And then I'm John. trying to remember who was on that tour. Well, it was. We did, we did the. It wasn't Pat Godwin. No, no, no. We did, we, we did, we did the Dirty Show. Yeah. So it was you. Oh, it was Uncle Lair. Uncle Lair. And yeah. let me think of the third one. I'm trying to think of the third Schubert. one. Schubert. There you go. Jimmy Schubert. So, and, and then you, and another thing, and another, <laughs> and another thing. Don't make me bring I, out Stinky right, the sock puppet. I, so then you go to <laughs> South Bend. Yeah. So when South Bend, it, it might it's be only the, the second. It, one. I don't know if it was the first or second, second. first or second one, and then well, you can tell what I don't. I don't know. I know exactly. Well, this you made is where fun it comes back. Owner, it was Sean this, Rouse, yeah. who you brought well, up love, earlier in conversation. I, I love Sean Rouse. Fucking, I, I think one of the funniest guys of my career that started after me. Like, well, you brought him into the club. You introduced me to him. He's fucking brilliant. He's still brilliant. He's just a physical wreck with right. the rheumatoid arthritis right. and the new knees. He's fucked. Right. Uh, book Sean Rouse. Uh, this uh, podcast sponsored by Sean Rouse. Anyway, <laughs> he had been fucked so hard by that lady in South Bend. One of these like crippling stories where he drove all the way from L.A. to do South Bend. And he's, you know, he's a polite kid and he goes in. And he does what they hired him to do. And it, there was a rape bit, and there was some woman wait, from wait, a wait, rape wait. crisis I, 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 center. I, I, I'm going to say one thing. Yeah. I, I, uh, was, was it the rape crisis, or was she, or was that the one she was pregnant? I don't know. Abortion, okay. whatever it was. Okay. It right. was some hot <laughs> button. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're all yeah. the same. It's, well, someone from the crowd led a, a something. Oh, yeah, I wasn't she there. She was. I think she was in the crowd, though. Yeah, she, she was she, in the she, crowd. She was there. Okay, yeah, yeah. And she went ape shit about his act, and the woman, whoever she is, fired him without paying him because that woman who led a big, you know, rape crisis, abortion, whatever. I don't know what, whatever the the you know league was. <laughs> <laughs> And Whoever just, boycotted that he, show. He drove all the way from L.A. She paid him for that night and said, well, I'm sorry. And just, Is that Lisa Grigsby? No, no, no. no Grigsby's no, no. fucking great. No, uh, no this, that, she's from Dayton. It was a girl. It was South no, Bend, Indiana. South Bend, Indiana. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I... No, I, she was at the show, I'm saying, in the, wasn't she in the audience? I think oh, she was I at the audience. I think I heard later she I, was That's what I'm saying. Show, I think yeah. she's... Yeah, so whatever you said. Anyway, yeah. I went on a giant fucking tirade in South Bend about how fucked the lady from the funny bone <laughs> was and, you know, you know, wish death on her children. I don't know. I, it was a long, drawn-out <laughs> tirade. <laughs> It was half my act. Right. And then, so, uh, and so, then I got fired. Well, well no. Home. So, so <laughs> obviously, because of that, you know, so there's a Bob and Tom affiliate in South Bend. They're getting complaints. You know, Bob and, you know, Bob and Tom are getting complaints, and, and they, they love you. I go, oh, we can't do this. So I called Judy at, at the time, you know, uh, your manager. And I said, Judy, I go, you know I love Doug. <laughs> I go, but, but we can't do these shows anymore. I go, we can't do it. And then you called me. To apologize. I'm like, Doug, I'm sorry. It was my fault. I oh, go, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, like, the whole thing, I'm like... I knew like, I shouldn't be yeah. on a Bob and Tom tour, <laughs> That's exactly right. but I was in a place where I can afford to get fired. <laughs> Sean Rouse, on the <laughs> other hand, right. they just, like, a guy that's, like, hand to mouth, literally fucking hand to mouth, right. and then... And he's not a guy that's going to complain or has any weight to throw around. And he's crippled. <laughs> and they, oh, it was just, yeah. I still fuck. I played South Bend for the first time since uh, on the uh, September tour at uh, some shithole, fun shithole. I say shithole with uh, knowing that's where I belong. <laughs> and I still fucking brought it up. No, but, but, <laughs> see, but I, I, there's only a few people who <laughs> piss me off in this industry, and I remember them. <laughs> That's All our the, good stories. Who, who are the people who pissed you off? Let's go there. 
They'll know. <laughs> And then, and actually, the <laughs> when fun. some some tragic happening befalls them, they'll never look all the way back to <laughs> 1994 to Doug Stanhope, and you didn't pay him what? <laughs> Lansing, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I think one of the one of the most uncomfortable moments in this club, which I laugh my I, to this day is one of my favorite jokes I've ever heard a person say, but. It's the South. So it's probably we had a five year break there from the first time. And uh, so this is one, one of those early seven o'clock shows. And uh, you are just railing on the Bible. Yeah. Eh, whatever. And then some, I had those years. <laughs> exactly. And then <laughs> before I and, realized it's trout in and, a barrel, I mean, it didn't make a difference. You could just see this lady almost like tears in her eyes and she shouts something out. And I think your line was. Did you read the Bible? I've read the Bible. I drove from Shreveport, Louisiana, to Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky. I read it one billboard at a time. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and, and, I mean, so this lady's walking out. I can't go to her, ma'am. That is one of the most brilliant jokes I've ever heard. I got to sit there and joke. eat shit from this lady, knowing it's my favorite joke. I'm going to tell fucking everybody this joke afterwards and just getting yelled at for about five minutes. She has tears in her eyes about you beating up the Bible. <laughs> Those are the, the, the most fun days were back in the nobody knows you days of comedy because you were playing to anyone who would walk into a comedy club blind. And I really miss that crying bachelorette party. Oh, she missed it. Yeah. She missed it too, absolutely. The lady, she, she's missing you too every night. I was like, boy, I wish those were great days with Doug. <laughs> What, do you have a good firing story? No, I never fired. The, the only thing that uh, you educated me in life a little bit um, at Montreal Comedy Festival. Uh, oh, yeah. This is the that, yeah the story you said we can't tell well, this. Here, yeah, tell it. Me. Okay, well, um, I was up there. You were up there with Betsy. Yeah. And for some reason, you guys decided to spend the night with me because I had a room. You guys didn't have a room or something was going on. We and, spent the night with you? I just you? heard you guys laughing in the bathroom. I'm like, what's going on? And you were peeing on Betsy in the shower. That's <laughs> eh, bullshit. That, that happened in Salt Lake City. No, you told me it was going on right in there. And I'm like, what the heck is going on in there? I know that was. I know this story because Betsy turned it into a bit where I peed on her in a tub and... St- Oh wait, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Because we were Betsy, because Betsy and I were real in. close. Because she's and it, I peed on her in a tub somewhere, I and then was, she got me back by peeing I, I mean, in coffee uh, uh, that she she made. peed on you exactly. It's the whole no, story. She, that you yeah, guys, she peed in a, your coffee. In, in a yeah, she made a pot of it? coffee yeah. with pee in the yes. So it was you, filtered. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you educated me in life about that because I married 23 years. Would never think to ever be on something. 23 years as long as I've been doing comedy. Yeah. I'm almost at a point in August I will have done comedy longer than I didn't do comedy before that. That's fucking scary. Wow. That's a long time. It is. And that lady here at 7 o'clock Saturday night will debate you on the comedy part. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's not for everyone yeah. that's why we keep moving uh all right uh i don't know where how we're gonna wrap this up but i'll take that other cocktail then we'll uh remember when i used to get whores back over to your uh comedy condo now i have uh these guys <laughs> How the hell can you? I won't even introduce you because I want to talk to you tomorrow night. Uh, uh, Firing story about him? You've never fired anyone. No, No, anybody. Oh, 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 have I ever fired anybody? You used to to call me and throw people off stage and say, I'll close the show. Bill Bill, Bill Maher, I mean, throwing him out of the club, almost killing him. Ran him out of a club in in Kendall. That was an He threw me out of his Fourth of July party. Literally, I almost beat him up. I mean, literally ran him out of a club and almost killed him. How Um, long ago? Um. I, it's probably 15 years ago, 12 years ago. We had a club. He was on that, the show, whatever it was, Rascals. We, we had a club down in um, Kendall called Rascals Comedy Club. And he came in to do a one night show. And uh, he was getting ready to do an HBO special. So we were recording it. And after the show, he was asking for his VHS, you know, the tape. And the manager, Marcus, at the time got so busy, he forgot to press play. So he didn't record the show. And it was a great show. Sold out, you know, 450 people. So um, I walked into the 
to the room, and you know me for a long time. You know I'm I'm not really good at humble. <laughs> so, but I walked in and said, uh, Mr. Ma, I don't know how to uh, explain this to you, but our manager got uh, a little caught up and he forgot to press play, so I don't have a VHS for you, and I, I apologize. And he goes, that's all I need to hear. And he pushed me out of the room, and I started to walk out, and there was a young lady by the name of uh, Linda... What was Linda's last name? She used to work for Rascals in New Jersey. Oh, about um, it and she was the man. She looked at me. She goes, well, that didn't go, go well. And I went, that sawed-off little motherfucker. And I walked in, kicked open the door, and I said, listen, I don't give a fuck who you are, but I'm about to <laughs> kick your fucking ass if you don't get out of my fucking club. And I grabbed him, and we started, walked him right down the hallway, threw him in his wait, car. Wait, can, I, can, I, can I stop for one second? Yeah. Okay, he was only doing the early show. Yeah, he was only But doing- we were doing a late show as well. So there are 300 people. <laughs> there is a, this is not an empty club. So there is 300 people there's people to get in line in. to get the next show. And, and now he also has him. He also him by the scruff of the neck, and he's dragging him through the club. So now they're not there to see Bill Maher, but they know who Bill Maher is. Now Bill Maher is getting drugged through the club. And, 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 and if it was in the days of yeah. camera phones, it would have been a great, it would have been a great yeah. story. And, so and the, the next day, I get a phone call from his agent saying, "I hear things didn't go so well," and I explained to him because, because listen, I understand that Bill gets a little uppy, but you forgot to pay him. <laughs> I sent him the check afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fucking great story. <laughs> you guys should have the Dorfman Brothers <laughs> podcast. Just telling fucking road stories. Oh, fuck. So I could, we could tell everything about him for, for I, a little bit. What, what did I do? Fighting. Uh, I actually got to tell you the truth. When we first opened Vernon Hills. Did you ever hit a comic? David. Almost Bill Maher. But even oh, earlier than that, almost. though. No, earlier. All right. I'm just telling you, when we first opened um, Vernon Hills. Yep. So that we opened up in... September, October, and it was March. He was it was a special game. But there's a whole there was a whole uh, like cable special. Uh, uh, like North Shore Magazine was do a special and build. I mean, after proving didn't want to do it, we actually had to send him out of town. Rick Yude, who started Zanies and everything that, called Andrew up and said because Andrew wanted to go down to the he was actually at the house. He was going to drive back to the club and beat the fuck out of Bill Maher. Rick, <laughs> Rick actually called him up and said Andrew. Not only are you not going to do that, he sent you out of town. He said, "Go do, go do something." And he said, "Get out of wherever you were." He sent me to go do a show. Beat up Bill Maher. That's like beating up me. Yeah, no, but but, <laughs> but he had a, a anger problems. But he but he, <laughs> he did exactly. But yeah, but uh, I n- never hit a comic. Never, never thought about it a few times. <laughs> You just said, fuck it, I'll use his material when I headline. When There's they nothing wrong with that. I used a lot of people's material, and I'm very free and honest about that. <laughs> <laughs> do I, do Actually, I, I never used anything from anybody who was going anywhere. Yo, no. You, well, <laughs> That's why we have open you, mics. <laughs> again, you were playing to crowds that ha- had to hear the fucking weakest shit in the world. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> You All are, right, you if you and Bobby well, Jewell were in a comedy competition. No, 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 you can't even, com- <laughs> you can't even compare Bobby to me. I actually Bobby Jewell's the, the, uh, probably the biggest douchebag. We're, we're going to tell who, what comics you don't like. <laughs> or, actually, or actually, fuck. The thing about Bobby, if there was ever a, a show about a comedy club, he is the perfect comedy club owner. Yeah. I mean, he's the quintessential comedy club owner. There used to be a comedy club in Tampa called Side Splitters. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's gone. But they're, they're, they're the most legendary piece of shit douchebag owner. They should have called him Bobby the Wig because he had the worst <laughs> toupee. Now, I'd worked. And in, slept in the condo with the comics. He never did that. Well, here's the thing I worked there two times, and the staff was great. We still have great friends. He dated one of their waitresses, for, lived with her for years. Uh, great, because t- he wasn't there. The third time I was booked there, we showed up. The Tampa Bay Lightning had me as the guest guy that goes, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the Tampa Bay Lightning? So I had just good, done the man show. They get me a jersey with Stan Hope on it, which I traded to Josh Blue, and I want it back, Josh Blue. I was drunk <laughs> 10 years ago. Now I'm old. <laughs> Uh, we're fucked up. Me and my tour manager here, Greg Chaley, we get in a cab to go to Side Splitters. Dr. Dirty is playing. <laughs> so we show up and I have a eat bite, fucks up, gobble, dip, dip, dip. We come in blazing drunk and Bobby Jewel is there. And then I, all I can see is the wig. It looks like <laughs> the his, wig. Yeah. Is the worst fucking 
Dom Herrera probably wrote that joke about <laughs> fucking Bobby Jewell's wig. And it's all I can see. And evidently, you don't mention Bobby Jewell's wig. It's like Tom Sobel's baby cunt on his nose. From Comedy Caravan, you never met Tom Sobel. Absolutely, he had this well, like, be, perennial yeah. weeping sore on his nose. Yeah, that, he used to wear a band aid. He, he, he was, it, it, it never was, went away. It, it, no one could explain. What it. the worst part about it is, it really did look like a baby cunt. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys know that, but that's exactly what it looked like. Yeah, wow. <laughs> but he had it for like years. He, I, yeah, he did have it for years. No one could that explain what it was. I'm like, I'd heard about it when I saw him. Is this it's a giant hole in his nose? Open, open, <laughs> weeping thing, and it was a giant nose. And then he would close talk you. So this <laughs> giant weeping nose sore is coming at you every time he leans in to tell you how great Gallagher really is as a social commentator. <laughs> He kissed Bingo's hand. Oh, this is your girlfriend, Bingo. And he leaned down to kiss her hand, and she's trying to move her hand away from the fucking sore. So anyway, Bobby Jewell, I made some crack about his fucking wig, thinking he was well aware of the fact. He owns a comedy club, and he wears the worst absolute And it has a chin strap. To pay. That's the joke that, right. yeah, oh. that Dom Herrera wrote about Bobby Jewell. Right. Right, yeah. and uh, <laughs> then I see uh, on his face that that didn't go down too well, and then you don't realize till you wake up in the morning. Ooh, I did a social faux pas. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we can get over this. And it was obvious throughout the week he fucking hated me. Sunday night we start playing poker after the place shuts down with the staff and Bobby Jewell. This is the it's all in no you know no limit no buy no rebuys. This and that. And I kicked his ass. And then he's like, well, I'm buying back in. I'm like, you said no rebuys. And then it's, it's getting real tense. And he said something. He's like, oh, yeah, you don't want to work here again, do you? I go, you think I'd come back to this <laughs> shit hole? And he's like, that's it. And he fucking grabbed me. And then everyone had to fucking break it up. Really? And then, yeah. And then I fucking I then I I just, I'll let you buy in if you throw the wig in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I took him in the office and I go, all right, just to settle things down. Uh, I I took him in and I go, all right, listen, let's be quiet for a second, and then as soon as because they're all listening, so as soon as we've waited for a pregnant pause, then we just start kicking fucking file cabinets lock the door and just make it sound like a full on fucking brawl and that'll kill the fucking tension because I like to do that <laughs> and then he went along with it but I still fucking woke up hating his guts <laughs> yeah it broke the tension for a minute and he goofed along but yeah I fucking hate that guy I hate you with every rotten tooth in my head black eyes to you motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> he's actually a really nice guy no, he's a terrible. <laughs> he's a fucking terrible no, person. No, he's fired two guys uh, that were featuring there once he found out they were friends of mine. Brendan Walsh and Brett Erickson, two of the best, and fucking Walsh is on fire now. Two of the best fucking comics, and not like fuck up, you know, comics. They were like, yeah, solid. club owners have the right to do shit like that. Yeah. That's yeah. what we. That's what we do. And right. apparently, and he's got the right to talk about <laughs> shit on his podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> he. But he. I'm telling you, if there's ever a comedy club, he's the perfect owner. He is. He just. He lives for it. a sitcom he acts comedy it. club. He, he yes. does. He does. He lives it. He acts it. But if, right. you, if you sat down and had a drink with him, you, you'd, you'd get along fine with him. Well, I, I tried to that night. I was shit faced to mention <laughs> his fucking wig. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, the, the wig's not the best. That's for sure. All right. Uh, wrap it up. Uh, All right. Uh, apparently, we overstayed our welcome. No, no, no. I've, I'm, I've been worried about you the whole fucking time I was on stage tonight. I'm like, fucking Dwarfman just drove from Tallahassee and you know, watching the clock. And I was uh, going to have more fun doing this. <laughs> See, I told you he cares. He's a giver. He's a giver. That, that, that's what I've always said about him. He's a, he's a giver. He should be a father because he'd be the perfect dad. <laughs> you had uh, one waitress here that was kind of. Uh, I think Hedberg had something to do with her. She was a bit legendary. 
here? We had, we had a couple. I'm trying to think. I'm uh, trying to think of the Hedberg days when around when you first booked me, you were booking Hedberg. I think I, in my memory, it was like a haunted castle that I stayed in that she lived in. It was back in my uh, let me just jerk off on your tits days. <laughs> like, that was your closing move. Where, uh, I you know, that was my brother. Um, <laughs> uh, you don't want to fuck me You're here? Or yeah, the first time I worked here. No, I thought she I let me saying, stay at her house. And no, then, I thought when you said jerking off at her tits, I thought you were talking about my video? brother. <laughs> um, what? It, no, I'm trying to think. Is it? Is it? Is it? Was it? Was it? Was it? Was she crazy? Yes. Was it Mary Jane? Was that her name? Yeah, that sounds that yeah. sounds familiar. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> one, one thing. If if you were, here's one thing about this this girl. You could, as a guy, running a club. Any girl can call at any time and call off. Say you got plumbing problems. Yeah. There's not a single guy will go, oh, whatever. Okay, good. You know, and, and argue with you about your plumbing problems. So she wanted to go to a party on Saturday night. This girl called off with pancreatic cancer. <laughs> I'm just telling you, she was fine on Tuesday, but she had a, she, she had a I mean, that's all you got to do. She actually called, she called off work with pancreatic cancer. <laughs> Back Saturday. Uh, she was, it was a Saturday. She wanted to go to a party. I just... I, I don't think I thought that was a little unnecessary. <laughs> and if you talk to anybody at the time, and then and then I'll tell you one more story. We had earthquake was here, so this is this is like the first time. This is probably 15 years ago. Earthquake was here, and earthquake was working here on Halloween week. Okay, can we wear costumes? Sure, wear costumes. So me being Jewish and earthquake being black, I thought Hitler was a little excessive for <laughs> a waitress to be wearing. That's the that's that's the costume she and chose. Pancreatic cancer. Was she, black, she, she's she's not right either. She walks into the club as Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> that is the. That is hot. That is, that is, that is kind of. I hot. just didn't think that was the best outfit. <laughs> it wasn't a great choice. And you fired me. <laughs> I never fired you. I waited till right. Sunday. Said I just think it's. I just don't think it's a good fit. <laughs> I, and I said I don't think it's. It's not you. It's me. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, yeah, but, girl, but what about the girl in the Hitler? Like, I did she, send her home though. Yeah, I no, said you can't wear comics. She's good for business. <laughs> yeah, she was here before I got here. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. I, I think there was. A, she was batshit crazy. By the way, there were. There's some clubs that you show up and you work, and they're like, oh. I remember uh, Pittsburgh, where this club, the, uh, the improv in Pittsburgh, used to have a waitress that was legendary for she fucked a tell. Norton peed, or she peed on Norton in the green room toilet. We've all done that. And I'm like, oh, are you the girl? <laughs> yeah, cut to. <laughs> yeah, what's your fetish? <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you peed on Norton, I guess I don't have to try real hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, Mary Jane, who I think was your. Yeah, I, I, I can't tell you if she peed on anybody. I can just no, no. <laughs> she was. Yeah, she was more known for crazy. Oh, crazy. But, yeah. A lot of comics get, got close to it. All right, I'm getting fucked up. Let's wrap it up. Okay, let's go get fucked up. Yeah. Wait, are you still up? Yeah, let's go get an eight ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's back in the 80s. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, that's yeah. another just, Uncle Funny just, story. Just <laughs> we, we got some Coke this week that someone palmed us at the merch booth and had to throw it out, like, yeah, that's good. Even good. Bingo's like, no. And the big Bingo's wait, usually. Wait, I will say one thing, though. He might be the only club owner to party with the comedian on a Saturday night and actually try and force the comic to cancel Sunday night. <laughs> the comic wanted to do the show. Andrew goes, I'm too fucked up. I don't want to do the show. No, we people bought tickets. Let's do the show. No, I don't want to do the show. <laughs> that probably hasn't happened too often. No, that's <laughs> so who was that? Um, <laughs> he's doing well now. We yeah. don't want to say it. Did you say he's in a program? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he wasn't anonymous then. <laughs> he was not anonymous then, but he's in a program right, now. <laughs> get us a round of drinks. These guys have fucking too many stories. I'm going to just milk you. I, I've been 
I'm, I'm polite, and I think that you want to leave, but you have too many fucking good stories. <laughs> so I'm gonna just keep talking till you guys go. Fuck it, you wrap it up. Three cocktails, or just or just one. I'll grab a Bud Light. Bud Light, bingo. I'll bartend. Can we? <laughs> I got a, I got a no tend. Bud Light. Bud Light. I'm just drinking uh, vodka on the rocks. That that's a wicked lie. He's giving you the eye of he's no. It's vodka on the rocks. It's it's flavored vodka, but it's vodka flavored like what? It's what? called Sprite? loopy vodka. <laughs> It's Fruit Loop Vodka. Oh, shit. Fruit Loop Vodka. It's Fruit Loop Vodka. Good. I, I, I like you're getting... Uh, but it's Vodka on the Rock. Faggoty like me in my old vodka. age. I, I don't want to yeah, it's recoil Luke. from a shot yeah, anymore. No, no. That's, no, that's, no, I drink I drink stuff that tastes like nothing or good. It, it, tastes, it tastes delicious. Absolutely. Can I get a blueberry vodka? <laughs> blueberry vodka. Yes. <laughs> yeah, can I get a Count Chocula uh, gin? You know what I bet? I think they have. I bet you they make that now. <laughs> All right, we're back we from sponsored? break. That, we sponsored by? That, that, that break was sponsored by Brian Dorfman will let me smoke a fucking cigarette in the green room. Absolutely. Will you? Absolutely. Woohoo! All right. Give me a cigarette. I saw an ashtray over there. Are we have kidding? respected the don't smoke in the condo thing. It's a fu- oh, that's that, that's nice, but fucking my manager smokes her all the time. Why shouldn't you? Oh, I, yeah, I'm the smoke Nazi. I oh, hate- I thought it was him. Nah, no, no, no. But thank you for we had- in the condo. Yeah, yeah, no. Kind of we do that. Oh, well, I read the rules. <laughs> I didn't, I, yeah. what, what are the rules in the condo? Yeah. The rule is if you, uh, if you smoke in the condo, you will never be booked back ever again. Which, you know, at this point, I think <laughs> never again, maybe someday. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, your condo in <laughs> Davie, yeah. Florida. Yeah. Do you remember when I worked with, at that time, probably D.T. Tosh, now known as right. Dan Tosh? Okay. <laughs> and Chicken was the opener. Do you remember this? Michael Roof. Michael Roof. Michael Roof was the MC. We're all staying. By the way, the only comic I've ever fired. Did you fire him? I fucking love you for that. And I. I, But finish your story. I'll I'll tell you why though. He well, he was a fucking prick. Like he was killing. This guy made uh, uh, Dane Cook look like fucking Lenny Bruce. (laughs) <laughs> as dumb as he was, he would come out with such nothing where, hey, guys, don't you hate going to dance clubs? And all the people are like, and then he'd cue his his music, and it'd be, hey, Sheila, it's your birthday. And all he'd do is dry hump the stool the and chair, then right. j- jump in the audience and dry hump a dude in the front row, and the crowd would go ape shit like this is... There's no premise. There's nothing other than don't you hate dance clubs? Because guys are like this. Q and dry humps a dude. And he was destroying at your club in Davie so they hard. did like shiny objects. Where yeah. they, Dan Tosh, they're chanting for chicken. He went by the name Chicken. After my show, they're chanting for chicken. <laughs> and then he would, and you'd say, hey, listen, you do whatever, 12 minutes, 15 minutes. And he would do seven extra minutes and he wouldn't listen to you. He wouldn't listen to fucking management. He'd like, it, it just do his time. He's a guy I fucking pushed into a men's room like, you're a fucking cunt. You do your fucking time. Don't be a prick. Worked out well for him. Yeah, he oh. killed himself. <laughs> no, kill Woo! <laughs> no, I just did Tosh.0 and I haven't seen him since a long, long time ago and I go, did you read where fucking chicken killed himself? How happy were you? <laughs> and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> and Dan Tosh said something like uh, conciliatory, like, yeah, I guess he had a hard time. I go, but how happy were you? He goes, oh, don't get me wrong. I fucking shit my pants with joy. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick that guy was. And awful. So, I, did, go ahead. I, I did not fire him for any type of comedian or comic reasons, but so he was the MC. He was, he was young in there. So one of the things I think uh, an MC should do is at least say goodnight to... <laughs> The customers. <laughs> he fell asleep on Wednesday night and Thursday night. Never came back to the club. He just fell asleep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so and then and then he did it in between. Like it was like Friday night. He did it like three nights in a row. And I said after Friday night early show, I figured this is going to be a problem. <laughs> and I said you got to go. 
Yeah, he was, but he was really he was, cocky. He before yeah, absolutely. His time. But but he, but he but he was not because of of the comic stuff. He literally just that's when the house was the condo. We went across the street and just fell asleep. Never came back. He's the guy I think destroyed Montreal. He did. He was the Montreal. he was the last big For development, development deal. deals. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. The way they gave him yes. the the $250, last two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I think he got. Yo, I, I might have been more. Yeah. Least. He got he, he, it was the last big deal that at least he, that's what everybody he said. He did one or two shows and killed and then it's immediately they pulled they canceled the rest of his shows before they saw through the facade. Right. And then started the bidding war and then he went on to do fucking nothing but kill himself, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> it's a tough closure to follow. <laughs> <laughs> This should be sponsored, I think, right now by some of like, those antidepressant drugs. I think, <laughs> I think it's where this sponsor part of the show. By Lexapro. Yeah. Uh, Pax. Now, now, now I'm, tr- I'm trying to think what Brian Hennigan would do right now. Because Brian Hennigan's the guy that comes into the club if he's on the road with us, my manager, and he, uh, the Scotsman, and he'll go, what's the, what's, the worst, what's the worst comedian you've had here? Who's the worst tipper? Who's the, what's the guy? Like, you want to get the dirt on the comics. The comics are the worst crowd because the worst crowd we've ever ha- I've ever had in my whole entire life is Jackie Mason's crowd. There's no worse. There's nothing worse than old Jews. I mean, you just walk up to a table of old Jews and go, "Was anything okay tonight?" You should have hired they, Mary Jane. They to be are the waitress absolutely that night. <laughs> okay. The absolute worst crowd. Let me ever. ask you. Yes, I, I, I should have a waitress in here to balance this out. Worse than you probably haven't booked a Mark Lundholm. Oh, we know Mark. comedy. Oh, no, I love Mark no, Lundholm. He's a well, great guy. We, we, would, would you I rather have I old would, Jews no, 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 or no, AA I, people? I, 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 I will, I will give you one comedy. more. I'll give you one more worse than both of that. Is we used to do um, Christian shows. So the crowds would laugh. But I, this is I've never seen. That actually, somebody actually left a waitress a fake bill. So she thought it was a tip, and then you open up the bill, and it was scripture on there. <laughs> that oh, is, oh, so oh. It's like, there, it's oh, like, the, like the there'll be no just, money. Yeah, but on no your deathbed, yeah, that that you received so, total taxes. So, so, so I got that going for it. Was just, it was nice. was scripture. I'm like, well, she no, really no, no, can't no, pay no, the no, rent with that one. No, Mark Lundholm's not a good guy. He's always nice to me. Oh, yeah, I just okay. uh, I, I'm, I'm anti AA oh, the oh, same way I'm atheist. Like yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah, bullshit. Yeah, no, no. I think he's got ten different babies at ten different clubs around the country. Really? Oh yeah, he, he could fuck all your waitresses to... sober. Oh he's yeah he's oh, sorry. he's really sorry. great at that. Ah uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what? Doug's over there. Why don't you just piss on him and jerk <laughs> off on him like everybody else? Who does he think he is? Fucking her normal. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, will t- I will tell you a great customer story. Yeah. So right to find break- a veteran waitress. I want to <laughs> find out no, this, who the, the biggest th- piece of shit tippers are. Steve Chantel still out there. For- so group of six really drunk girls. And one was crazy, <laughs> crazier drunk than the rest. Hang on, hang on. Your brother's spitting <laughs> vodka through his nose. <laughs> Fruit Loop flavored no, vodka through his yeah. nose. Are you going to tell the <laughs> the Wet Willie story uh, after uh, that? That's uh, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay, no. So six drunk girls this is at a table. So One crazier drunk than the rest. So I go. I find the most sober girl in the party that I can possibly find. I said, "Listen, she's got to go." They all agree. They pay you. They the two of them are going to leave. So they pay the the part of the bill for this girl and this girl, and they walk out. The other girl. Um, I didn't really have a lot of conversation from, but I guess she was unhappy because she leaves the room and actually right behind this wall where we are sitting, she walks around, she unbuttons her pants, squats down and lays a deuce right there on the sidewalk. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, my security guard comes inside. We're over there. We're laughing. He's, he's across. He comes inside. He wants to uh, shoot her if he can. <laughs> he's never been more horrified. And the best part about that story is, so everybody that I played college hockey with, I tell that story to, they go, was she hot? <laughs> 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 right. yeah, that was, this 
podcast should be called Before There Were Cell Phone Cameras. <laughs> yeah, like, absolutely. Like all the shit that, oh, I'd remember now oh, no, that against my right. will. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank but, God I'm not fucking 25 anymore. Since you're editing this, he, he can continue the story because that's, that's one of our favorite stories because you can't beat that, right? You tell a story like that, you can't beat it. Well, we told it to one of our partners, the guy, his name is Bill Dickinson, who owns Wet Willies. And as soon as he told that story, Bill goes, Bill goes, oh, I can beat that. I got a better story. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, you tell the story. Okay. But, but, but so, sometimes no, at the end of the story, we were, we were up in Louisville, whatever it was. Right, and, exactly. And he goes, ah, and I, I've never heard that response for it. He goes, ah, that's nothing. <laughs> 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 nothing? Really? I've never heard that response before. And so, so you can tell the story. Okay, so Wet Willie's, it's a daiquiri bar. That you yeah, 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 I remember Wet Willie's. Okay, they so were you, besides you know, the actually, knuckleheads. By the way, <laughs> it's this, it was whatever year it was. It's it was St. Patty's. Patty's exactly. Day, right, right, yeah, so yeah. They, you know, they have a drink. Their, their number one drink that they sell millions of dollars with is a drink called Call a cab. You just you drink that because you got to call a cab, and I went, uh, and, and it's a frozen drink. It's exactly <laughs> frozen yeah. drink. So it's got grain alcohol. St. In Patty's yeah. Day. They're right down. They're in Savannah and they're right on the river there. Okay, and back they, they have thousands of people that come. So they take the street over up above just to put a line of porta potties out there to service all the people that it's that big of a party. So he goes up there to check on everybody to see how things are doing. And in the porta potty, the, the door's wide open, and there's a girl in there just leaning in, just throwing up in one of the porta potties. And behind her is her boyfriend <laughs> with his, her skirt up, just drilling her right in the porta potty. <laughs> I'm pumping her, I'm pumping it out of her. <laughs> I was, uh, ooh, uh. I was waiting for Doug to go. That reminds me of a waitress. I'm telling you in yeah. Pittsburgh. You know what? That story, that's story. That's, 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 that's nothing. That's <laughs> exactly. Bart Reed's club. What happened there? Bart Reed's club. You know Bart Reed? Yeah, I used to work. I for guess him. comedy club owners are a much smaller no, bunch. No, I used than to comedians. work for him when I was really? a comic. Yeah, I used in to El Paso. Him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you were a comic. Yeah, many, thought, many, many. I thought many. you just watched it enough of them, wrote some notes down, and went. Ah, well, obviously, you, you have not I, played in Vallejo, I California. <laughs> I thought you were just cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a cocktail, and we're going to take a quick break here, and then cut in with an interstitial. I still want to know what's an it, interstitial. It's the uh, like a bumper. Okay, and here's a real word, interstitial. Yeah, doesn't fucking matter because it's fancy. You and I aren't going to disprove no, it. I, <laughs> right. Yeah. We're product of public schools. <laughs> I don't understand no. those words. Fucking check that fucking reference into a board, <laughs> hockey man. <laughs> Go to DougStanhope.com. If you assholes would just take one second to either email me with uh, what city you're in, I'll folder it in my hotmail. Yes, I still have hotmail. Or just sign up on my goddamn mailing list, because eventually Twitter will go the same way as MySpace and the Facebook, and then it'll be a LinkedIn world, <laughs> and then something else. But if you just go to my website, DougStanhope.com, and just sign up on the mailing list, but you're too fucking lazy. I hate every time I play a city, I get a million emails going, when are you going to play my city? Well, I just played there, but you didn't know it. Because I wasn't on Leno, or now Jimmy Fallon. Nothing is worse than going back at my age to a comedy club and seing the waitress that you fucked 20-some <laughs> years ago is still working there. And you go, I, I hoped for something more out of you. I thought you were going to move on. To what were you going to say? <laughs> I, I want to know about the, when you went back to a uh, comedy club and there was a waitress here from 20 years ago. Has that ever happened? Anybody oh, yeah. come up to well, say you not, got a kid? Uh, uh, go Bananas in Cincinnati. Yeah. The best fucking club over the years that I've ever worked that stayed the same, same partiers. But you don't feel bad for them like they have to do it. It's almost like a commune that okay. got old right. from the 60s, but there's still a commune. And they still, yeah, comedy still pays the bills. But, yeah, we give them drinks, and then we get fucked up, and we're fun. And who was your fucking bartender the hottest chick i've ever val yeah it's her <laughs> no fucking val val was this girl yeah. and she was like a post fucking like she was bored with it already but the hottest chick 
in that bar and you know, occasionally you could get her to drive you home but she's like yeah yeah all your uh young mullet shenanigans are not working on me <laughs> not with val no no nope. god damn it and i bet she still looks she as worked good. with me from the day i opened to the day we closed which is how long did yeah, Uncle closed? Funny's in Davie, Florida? Nine years ago, we closed to open up the improv at the Hard Rock. Did she yeah. go there with you, though? She went yeah, over to the Hard Rock, too. Yeah. 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 Whatever happened to Johnny oh. Chung? Chung, I think, moved to L.A. and then San Francisco. He had some problems, not just his skin. He used to run some Go real, Bananas, I right? Think. Yeah. He, he was the manager, he, yeah. general manager? But he left it in charge of the underlings who became, yeah, they're fucking great. Mikey and, and uh, fuck, no. Nah. I hate forgetting some guy's name on a podcast. Come on. You can it. edit it. No. Put his name back in. Anyway. Yeah, we'll edit that for sure. <laughs> we'll edit a lot of this. <laughs> All right. One more cocktail. One more cigarette in front of Dorfman where he can't fire me. And Doug is the only comic that you, you had your own ticketing system. Well, a lot of comics are using it now. Brown Paper Tickets, I guess, should be a sponsor because they do. Yeah. Uh, and there's a million of them. Brown paper tickets is the best we've found where you can just, yeah, even fucking Chad is running a, you know, open even mic. Chad. Thing. <laughs> no, I'm saying like guys who are just running their own thing on the side mm -hmm. as a local. Hey, it's a Nashville comedy festival for a day hit a thing. Yeah, you can use brown paper tickets and just at some point when we were doing rock and roll clubs, we're like, all right, these clubs are firing us. Fuck them. We're going to start working all these places where we have a mailing list fan base, and we'll just work the bar that we drink at after your club, <laughs> <laughs> which is really how it started, and and we just trust the door guy. And we're like, yeah, these door guys might be fucking us. Let's, uh, all right, I'm too drunk for this. Go, you tell them. What happened was it was right after the Sean Rouse thing because we were at the Tampa Improv, and uh, that was the last improv you did for like two years. And we found Brown Paper Tickets, which was a really small company at the time. Yep. And we ran with them. We were the first comic on there. And from that, we were able to book these clubs. And after like three clubs, it's like, this can't be fucking right. How much money we were getting before we even walked in the club. Because everything was done online. Because your fans seek you out and will go find you. And instead of doing four or five shows in a weekend somewhere... We do one show, one night, so everyone goes yeah, to that one show. Yeah, we can't show. fuck you anymore, and that's what the club owners are in it for. Boy, we, 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 was there a lot of fucking going on. I'm telling you, this room only holds 210. I don't give a fuck <laughs> what you say, and don't forget it, okay? But see, that's Papa it. Papa needs a new pair of shoes. No, it was, it was when we were doing the rock and roll clubs <laughs> that we thought, hey, we don't uh, have any control over the door. Why don't we pre -sale? That's we were, the way it's supposed to be. We, we were <laughs> Why rock the fucking boat? <laughs> what, what is your problem? We were We've been doing this for years. How to use PayPal. Well, maybe people can PayPal. Yeah. And that's when he looked it up and found brown paper tickets. Son of a bitch. I mean, there's a, a bunch of them out there right now. But brown paper tickets was a really small company in, uh, located in Fremont. And I was living in Seattle at the time. closed. No, they certainly I, no, did I'm not. No, I'm telling you, I heard that they They're closed. actually international they're now. Brown paper tickets. <laughs> they're, they're great. And uh, Doug, Doug, you've actually done some work with them. No, yeah, they, we don't no. need a sober voice right I'm now. Just Brown saying. paper tickets piss on anybody. I'd like to know that. <laughs> any, wait, any, any wait staff, anything? They piss on Ticketmaster. They, they piss on Ticketmaster. Everybody ticket master. should piss on Ticketmaster. Everybody yeah. should do that. And that That's was ridiculous. the big push. Anyway, that's another podcast. Listen, we, we got to get out of the green room. The fucking staff has to go home. Yeah, I'm through with you. The Dorfman's. I'm, I'm through with you. We could, <laughs> we could do this for a long, long time. If we had fucking rails... Oh wait! Yeah. Here's another thing, <laughs> and another thing, yeah. <laughs> and another and thing. If we didn't, if we didn't have to say names, we could do this for a long time. I, <laughs> I, 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 I stutter on the names a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next time we'll just talk about the dead ones. Oh, I remember when he came in because they can't call back and go. That's bullshit. I had more fun with the live ones, putting them to bed. <laughs> no, the ones that are dead now, we can talk about. Oh, I got you. Absolutely. It's history. All right, I gotta go. Bradley Balko's getting irritated. Uh, All right, that's a sign-off. <laughs> I'm sponsored by that. We'll edit this into something. Say Play. goodnight, Gracie. Goodnight, Gracie. Play the match. <laughs> to go to for political reasons. Uncle Funny's turned into a titty bar. It, yeah, it? It, well, it wasn't a titty bar. It was a Sofa King sports bar. 
That's what we turned it into. We, we, you know, self a king. Yeah, you like yeah, your girl, yeah, self a king hot. Yeah, the yeah. bear, self a king cold. It was actually the first R-rated sports bar in the United States, and we got sued by the motion picture industry that we had to take R-rated out of the name because they it, 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 seriously they do that. The MPAA oh, owns R-rated. They own R-rated. I mean, we oh, had a so law. I mean, the, the the suit. He that wasn't they smart said, enough to. Spell it O U R. Actually, the lawsuit we got we, the, the the booklet it was literally like um, like seven hundred pages long. Wow. The lawsuit that they sent to us, but it was the first R rated sports bar ever, and it'll probably be the last because of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so, well, yeah I, I used to get booked as triple X rated. No, you were I did clubs. that. Here, no, 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 yeah, you but were they, triple R rated because but, uh, you, there was no nudity. No. The, no, no. Well, I don't know about here, but comedy clubs in oh, general. Oh, but okay. they'll never sue you for that. <laughs> no. Yeah, tri- Triple X. They distance themselves. They what? Hollywood didn't register Triple X. Oh, really? No, a- a- actually, well, right, we X- have a well, fact checker in the back. Yeah. Radley a- Bolko. Actually, X rated. You can use anybody can use X rated. You can't use R rated, G, P, G, yeah, but X rated. You, you can't use and Triple X is also. Right, that is actually correct. Yeah, but our rated we couldn't use. Speaking of, I am sponsored by Saks Underpants with two X's. <laughs> I'm doing sponsorship for products I like, and hopefully they come around <laughs> and say, "Yeah, that way I can." I, I just promote Saks underpants? underpants. You're a fucking old dude. Yeah, I'm, I fucking, I'd show them to you. Yeah, they're no. They're, what is Saks underpants? They're right. underpants where they have like a ball cup inside that hold. If you have long balls, they keep spanks, spanks for men. But it's like actual <laughs> like like yeah. wings that it's hold your ball. Wings, gonna be fifty, pretty, <laughs> fucking gonna good. Be 50 pretty soon. We have all have psyche yeah, balls. Yeah, yeah, just, they, yeah. They drop. All right. So which one of you booked me first? I think it was. I will you. tell you the story. It's one hundred percent. Go see him. I didn't book yeah, you. Not here in Nashville. <laughs> just, exactly. not here in well, Nashville. no. Is, is this a story about you? I was the first guy that you had to apologize for firing. Well, no, but that okay, was that good. was not that was that, that was right, that's a completely good. separate story. All right, good. You, I mean, no, go, go, go ahead. Keep well, going. that one was. <laughs> well, for let let, let me just back up. I know how you you feel, both of you. <laughs> Because we do a, a huge Super Bowl party every year, and we have I live in a very condensed, silent residential neighborhood, which is the last two streets before a long way to Mexico. <laughs> and we play, we've had bands play there. We've had no noise complaints and neighbors, but it's so quiet that if you just had a conversation this loud, you can hear it two blocks away if you're on your porch. And they've never complained about bands. Then one Super Bowl, we thought, hey, let's put up some comics because they want to go up. And we put up Christine Levine, who's fucking hilarious. And she was a, she got about four minutes in, and I'm already like, okay, they're on a microphone, which is unnecessary <laughs> in this neighborhood. <laughs> and she's talking about having four kids and how it made her destroyed her pussy. Her pussy looks like it swallowed a dog and it chewed its <laughs> way out. And I'm a dwarfman at the back of my yard. We're outside. <laughs> Pacing back and forth, going, oh, the comment card is not going to be good on this. I'm dying. <laughs> and yeah, by eight minutes, the cops were there. We're sorry, folks. We're not going to enforce the two drink minimum tonight. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll let that you was, go on yeah. that. It was an uncomfortable. There's some week. free passes for Mustang Sally. will be here yeah. for the 4th of July party. No, then you came down to Uncle Funny's, and we booked you twice a year for, right. for, for five years. I don't think Six we years. had problems. No, ever. no. They loved you down by me. Yeah. Radio, we did great. You, you, you were you came down. You hung out. You and Batsy, that's where you met Batsy. I used to do a, a like my impression of him. It wasn't a good impression, but Uh-oh. I remember him picking me up from the airport and talking uh, uh, shit about like comics. And yeah, these comics called me up. <laughs> the, the way I I said the impression, not the right accurate. That's okay. W- sent me. All right, because. I say way. it's me. Yeah, will the I'm, real person... I, you know, no, and I, I will the, tell the story. Wait, and, these are the Dorfmans. Wait, I will refer to Brian. you as Nashville yeah. and yeah. Florida. Actually, true. He, Davey. He but, 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 fired you and then said, no, 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 no. You no, got to book well, him. Let, let him go. No, I'm saying, let that's Nashville I was, go. I didn't book you. Oh. Here. All right. Lenny Sisselman booked you here. who was the manager before me. Saw you at a comedy festival in Florida. Okay, and I'm this not, already sounds no, Friars Club. No, Lenny not. Sisselman was that guy. <laughs> exactly. Remember? Okay, no, we, exactly. we used to nosh. Nineteen, ba 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 ba. Okay, no. So, um, 
And I had never seen him. Because, oh, you got to see this guy. He's hilarious. Okay. So it's, that's where I think it was still like a Tuesday through Sunday week, whatever it was. But you got here like Wednesday night. And the show is your show. <laughs> it's not easy to sit there and watch an audience to go and, and not having a clue what the show was. I think I'm going to see, you know, Doug Stan. I'll tell knock, knock jokes or whatever the fuck's going to be <laughs> is a joke. So I'm. I am laughing. You're my style of comedy. 17 years ago, or 16 and a half, or whatever the hell it was, probably was not the style of comedy for Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, no. Right. So, and the crowd was a little uncomfortable, I guess is, <laughs> is a pretty good word to say. So, I'm, I'm like scrambling. I'm like laughing. I'm crying. I, I got a lot of emotions going through me at, at this moment. So, that's when I put like triple X rated everywhere, make the announcement for the shows. All that kind of stuff. So go through all week. We get through we, whatever walkouts we had. No fights. Nothing bad. Nothing yeah. bad. Sunday night, I pay you. I said, Doug, <laughs> I cannot remember the last time I've laughed this hard. I go personally. I love you. I go. Do not be offended if I never book you again. I go. Here is my brother's phone number. He will give you as many weeks a year as you a, want. Go down to where the coke is. They like it. They like this kind of humor down in South Florida. That's 100 true. That's 100 true. And and you you actually called me up because I told. I mean, I never book. I didn't. I shouldn't say I never book, but I didn't book you for a bunch of years. And I told everybody. If you have a chance to see this guy, become the people we used to pretend to be. <laughs> and Shrimple was always the guy that pretended to be the guy on The Sopranos, and it worked out for him. Worked but out yeah, there. I'd have my money on you, too. Any day of the way. He's a great guy. <laughs> yeah. Not, not mocking, but I'm telling you, he's not coming out of that. You round. never hit me. He did. <laughs> <laughs> not not hard. He's a, it was the legendary quote. Steve Shrimple, he was, was on The Sopranos. Later, but you used to run the Riviera, and he'd right. say to me as an opener, he was the first guy that booked me in a real club, and he, he'd go, uh, uh, you're doing seven minutes, not, <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm going to screw it up. Yeah, yeah. You're uh, not, not 701, <laughs> not 699. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> That's Steve. He ran a tight room. He did. He's a tough guy. Tough guy. So now you're my age and you're the younger brother. Yes. But you're the one that's punchy and doesn't remember shit like I don't. Yeah, well, you know, the 80s were not as good to me as they were to Brian. <laughs> that's for, that's yeah. for sure. I still had hope in the 80s. Yeah. You, 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 you and I, <laughs> when you came to Uncle Funny's, we used to party down and have a. Have a good time. I remember you used to you you booked me once with uh, uh, Otto and George. Yes, because at that time Otto and George was legendary for maybe not showing up at all. Correct. Uh, uh, yes. So you had to co-headline him. And, and Otto, out of all the comics, has the best segue into a joke I ever heard in my whole entire life. He had a guy heckling him, and he looked at me and goes, "I'm going to fuck you in the ass so hard your shoes are going to be full of blood." Everybody have a good Halloween here. <laughs> <laughs> like what? What? what uh, good Halloween? What was that? <laughs> you had me do something with him, and I think it was after a three-show Saturday where they were doing some. Uh, the, the radio was hosting something at a bar that after three shows you still wanted us to go to a bar you, and you had like, to do the puppets. I'm gonna follow you I'll be over there and like no you come with us we'll drive you no I'll follow you he didn't show up gotta be honest I have no clue what you're talking about. I think it was like a titty bar or something that we were supposed to Nashville uh, at Zany's Comedy Club which the Nashville Zany's is one of the best structured comedy clubs for comedy Brian and Andrew Dorfman, legendary comedy club owners, together under one roof at the Nashville Zanies on St. Patrick's Day. This is an actual date we're having yeah. right now? Well, no, I just, it bothers me that we're dating? Uh, when you listen to podcasts, because I listen to shit that might be big, four years old, big Star and they'll, fan. They'll, they'll, they'll say, oh, I'll, I'll Star be at the Lock. fucking, you know, Sir, La Lot. Sir Laughs a Lot. Great club, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. No, that was uh, Sir Laughs a Lot was Springfield, Missouri. Uh, there was also but they'll plug their dates without <laughs> giving the year. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not a guy that I like. I listen to this shit on the road because young people who know how to work iPods know how to put it on, and I, I don't know. But I have a date every year at Sir Laughs a Lot because that's there's what I another one. At. This is Sir Laughs a Lot. Yes. All right, this is uh, the uh, Blotto Biography Podcast. Since uh, after 23 years of comedy, I don't remember a fucking thing I've done with my life. 
other than constantly been, been in a circle of the road. And this is a, a special one that we didn't uh, uh, think would happen. I have both the Dorfman brothers, <laughs> legendary comedy club owners, oh, in the same room, in the green room at Zany's in Nashville. Andrew Dorfman used to run Uncle Funny's in the day down Way in Davie, Florida. Yep. Brian Dorfman has run Zany's here in Nashville forever. And good goodness. Good, good, good. Actually, Big Dorf just moved to Nashville. Do you know that he lives here from? Yeah, from he Ed? told me you live here now. But Big Dorfman was the scariest club owner next to Sh- Steve Sharippa that you ever worked for. Yeah, just so you know, okay, I have a standing offer with Don Marrera because he used to say that about Sharippa too, and I love Sharippa. I know that he and I can go in a ring, and I'll be the one walking out. Oh, I believe I, that. There's no yeah. way. Shri- so he's not. The, I, I got him hands Sharippa down. Falls into the, any day of the week. Sharippa falls hoss. into the category. I'm totally <laughs> I got, I got Bert. <laughs> Sharippa falls into the category where I, I always used to say, when did we 